This is chapter three, equilibrium analysis in economics. So first is the term equilibrium. So if you learn、uh, microeconomics, then you should be familiar with this term. So equilibrium just means a lack of tendency to change.、Uh, so it also means that all the factors in the system become become balanced. So none of them are willing to change. Okay. So let's. Use an example to show this. So here, this is partial market equilibrium, and、uh, this is a linear model.、Um, so this graph should be familiar to all of you. Actually, when you learn microeconomics, what you learn is、um, this is the P, the price, and this is a Q, right? And so this is a demand and supply.、Uh, this is demand and supply curve. Right, this is a more precise way of writing of、um, showing the graph between the relationship between price and the quantity. But here in the textbook, he just、uh, draw the Q in the y axis and and then the price as a as an x axis. Right, so it's not that pre-、uh, precise as this graph, but、uh, we just use it as an example here. So. Anyway, let's follow the textbook. In the textbook, we just、uh, use the Q as Y and P as X axis, right? So anyway, just、um, a little, a little, little bit difference between what you learned before. So here it shows the relationship between the quantities and the price, right? And、uh, this is a demand curve, and this is a supply curve. Right, um, and um,、uh, just a review. Um, so this demand curve is downward sloping. It's because when price increases, so the good becomes more expensive, right? And so, uh, fewer people would like to buy that, and so the quantity will decrease. And so this is a demand curve is downward sloping or negative relationship between price and quantity. And so for the supply curve, it's upward sloping, right? When quantity increases, the price also increases. So it should it should be the reverse. When price increases, the quantity will also increase, right? Because the supply curve shows how the producers will react to the increase of the price, right? The higher the price of the good, the better for the producers, right? Because they can get more money. So they are willing to produce more, so that that's why the supply curve is upward sloping, right? So this is demand and supply curve. And、um, uh, as you learn in the microeconomics, this point shows the equilib、uh, shows the equilibrium status of the system, right? When the supply curve intersects with the demand curve. So this P star is the equilibrium price, and the Q star is the equilibrium quantity. So when you are in this point, we said that okay, this system reaches the equilibrium, right? Because when the price increases,、uh, the quantity will there will be a difference between the two quantities here, and so in the end, it will go back. To the equilibrium price here, and、uh, when the price、um, was lowered a little bit, and then in the end, the price will move back, right? So here we reach the equilibrium, and we call this P star and the Q star the equilibrium price and quantity of the system. So this should be something we have already have already learned before, right? So Uh, as we are、uh, a mathematics course, so we need to solve the solution of the thing, right? We just、uh, not only draw the graph here and show the intersection, but we need to solve what is it, what exactly the p star and the q star. So here, this is our system. First, we have a demand, and if the q is our dependent variable here, then p. In the graph, p is an independent variable, right? So we can write the function of q against p, right? So q d is a demand 
curve, and P is a price. So we can write the the relationship between Q QD and P as this thing, right? So here, QD equals to A minus B P, and both A and B are positive. So A B here you can think of that as constants. Right? It's not um, an exact number, but they are constants, right? So why does A minus B P and both A B are positive? Is because uh, first A is positive because A is the intersection of this curve and the y axis, right? So this is the intersection. If we extend this line and intersect with the y axis here, so this is A, right? Because A is when P equals to zero, so there's no this part and the QD equals to A. So this is the intersection of the of the y axis and this line. So we can see that from this graph that A is a positive number, right? Because A is um, the length of this part. So A is positive and uh, B should also be positive because as we know that the demand curve is downward sloping, right? So the slope of this demand curve is negative. And then we have a negative here. So that means that B should be a positive number, right? For example, if B is two, and then this equals to A minus two P, right? So this is a downward sloping curve. So that's why B should be positive such that the slope minus B is a negative number. So this is a demand curve. And um, for the supply curve, Supply curve is an upward sloping curve, right? It's upward sloping. So that means that the slope here, the D here, should be a positive number, right? So here we use a minus sign here, but the, but the plus, plus sign here, uh, simply because we, we want both B and D to be a positive number, right? It's easier to, to analyze here. But um, right, it doesn't matter, actually. So uh, there's a plus sign here. And we know that the supply curve is upward sloping, so D should also be positive, such that the slope here plus D is a positive number here. And we don't require C to be positive or negative because as we know that C is also the intersection between this line and the Y axis, but here we don't know if C is positive or not, right? Maybe it inter intersects above the line, above the y-axis, or intersects below the y-axis, right? It doesn't matter. So we don't require C to be a strictly positive number, but we require all the other three to be positive. So when we, when combining with this sign, and then this should be a strictly downward sloping line, and this is strictly upward sloping line. So this is the idea behind why we write the two equations like this. So here we have represented our demand, <clears throat> demand and supply line as, as this. And we know that in the equilibrium status, so the Q of demand should equal to the Q of supply. So QD should equal to QS, right? Because during the uh, in the equilibrium status, the demand the demand quantity should equal to the supply quantity, and also the prices should be equal to each other, and so we have this equation right when we reach the equilibrium. So our next job, our next job is to solve the three equations. Uh, we combine the three equations and then we want to solve. Um, the P here, QD and QS here, right? So here we have the three variables to solve. Okay, so let's solve this problem here. First, as we know that during the, in the equilibrium, the quantities should be the same. 
So we can let Q to, to be equal to these two rounds. So all the three are equal to each other. We just let Q be equal to QS and all of them, both of them equal to Q, right, this Q. And so we can rewrite the three functions as two functions here, right? So QD, QS, the downward, uh, they, uh, they are now Q, right, here. So Q equals to A minus BP and Q equals to C plus BP. So here we have two equations. Right? We just uh, get rid of this one because we already rename the QD and QS, both of them to be Q. So here we have two equations to solve. And we know that both of them are Q, right? Because QD and QS, they're also Q. And so we know that if these two things are equal, so the right-hand side should also be equal, right? So A minus BP should be equal to C plus BP. So we can get rid of the Q here and just, just solve the P in this equation. Right, because uh, let's assume we we know a, b, c, and d because all of them are constants, right? But only p is a parameter here in this equation that need to be solved. So we can solve p in this equation, and uh, we move the b p to the right hand side. So this will be b plus d times p, and then we move the c to the left hand side. So it becomes a minus c, right? So this thing equals to this thing. So p star or p, the equilibrium price should be a minus c divided by b plus d, right? Okay. So this thing is just the p star we want to solve, right? Since we let um, qd and qs um, be equal to each other. Right, so this is a P star. And uh, to solve the Q star, well, you know that Q equals to A minus BP, right? Because QD equals to A minus BP. And uh, Q equilibrium or Q star is just the one point on the QD here. So this should also equal to A minus BP, right? And uh, all we need to do is to plug in the P star into this equation. So this P is actually, it's not the general P, it's actually P star. Uh, this is because we want to solve the Q here. And uh, we know that Q equals to A minus BP because Q is on this demand line, right? I want to solve exactly when p equals to p star, what is the q here, right? So we need to plug in the q star into the demand into the demand line, and then we can solve what exactly the q star here. So this is our idea. So we plug in the q star into the q star here, right? So this is the equation of the q, and then we plug in the p star here, and p star is this, and you rearrange. Um, and do some simple calculation, then you can find out, okay, is this thing. AD plus BC and then um, over B plus D. Right. So here we use a, uh, this, this is a demand QD, this function to solve the Q star. But we can also solve the Q star using the QS, right, the supply line. The supply curve is C plus DP. So we can also plug in P star into the C plus DP here, right? Because we know that Q star is, it lies in both the supply curve and the demand curve, right? So it satisfies both the supply curve function and the demand curve function. So we can use both of them to solve the, uh, solve the Q star here. Right, so Q star should also be equal to C plus D P star, right? This is because P star and Q star lies in both demand line and supply line, right? Supply and demand line. 
So we can use the two functions here to solve the Q star here. And then we plug in P star and then rearrange and do some calculation and then find the same answer as before, right? CB plus DA divided by B plus C. So these two things are equal to each other, right? These two things are equal to each other. So you can um, use either function to solve the Q star since P star Q star lies in both functions, is lies in both lines, right? So here this is how we solve the P star and the Q star, or exactly the coordinate um, of the equilibrium point here, right? So this is just a general solution. So let's use an example to um, illustrate. So here we have another example. Um, so we don't have ABCD here because I changed ABCD to, to specific, specific numbers here, right? ABCD here. So here we have QD equals to QS as we want to find the equilibrium. So we have this equi equation here. Uh, this is an equilibrium condition. And this is a, a demand curve function. And this is a supply curve function. So it has a specific form, right? So here we also need to find the Q star and the P star. And uh, what we gonna do is to follow the exact procedure as before, but uh, it should be much easier, right? Because we don't have the ABCD here, but exact numbers. So first step, again, we can let QD and QS both to be uh, Q, right? Since these two things are equal, so we don't need to uh, write the, this uh, footnote <coughs> here. And so we can write both of them to be Q. And um, since QD equals to QS equals to Q, so the right-hand side should also be equal to each other, right? So 30 minus 3P equals to minus 6 plus 9P. So this equation holds, and there's no Q here, only P. So we can easily find the P using this equation, right? We plug, uh, we move the 3P minus 3P to the right, and we move the minus 6 to the left. So this is 12P equals to 36. And so P star equals to 3, right? And then we, we can um, so the Q star using either solution, using either equation here, you can use 30 minus 3P, the QD, or the QS function, right? Since Q, P star and the Q star lies on both the curves, right? So we plug in P equals to 3, the P star value um, in here, and then we can find out uh, the Q star. And both answers should be exactly the same as each other as 21, right? So here, this is how we can solve the equilibrium price and equilibrium quantity if this is a linear model, right? Linear model just means that the function uh, is something like this, right? A plus BP. There's no P square here, right? There's no P square. So this is a linear model. And then next, we can look at a more uh, complex example. So again, this is a partial market equilibrium, but this is a nonlinear model. And so before that, everything above is a linear model, so it should be really simple. It's just a simple calculation, and you can find the answer. But for the nonlinear model, it's much more complicated. So here again, this equation is this um, yeah, the problem we want, we want to solve. Again, QD equals to QS, right? QD equals to QS because we, this is an equilibrium condition. And um, um, the QS is the same. 4P minus 1 is a linear model, right? Because um, there's, there's only P, there's no square or cube, right? But QD is different. 
QD equals to 4 minus P square. So we have a P square here. It's not P. If it is only P, then this is, a, this is a linear model. But here we have a P square. So this is we call we call a quadratic model. And it's called linear, nonlinear model, right? It's quadratic. Here this is a linear. So how do we solve this kind of questions? First, we just follow the standard procedure. We let QD equals to QS equals to Q. And since both of them equals to each other, the right-hand side should also be equal to each other, right? So 4 minus P squared equals to 4P minus 1, right? So here, um, this is just a standard procedure like before. And then we can find this equation. So p squared plus 4p minus 5 equals to 0. It's different from before because I show this example here as a comparison. So here, what we have in the end is 12p equals to 36. So it's very easy to find the answer, the p equals to 3, right? Because there's no quadratic form here, right? There's only p and p here. But here we have a p squared. So things are very different from before, right? So we cannot easily see the solution of this equation, right? So this is why we need some other um, tricks to find out a solution. So this equation, p squared plus 4p minus 5 equals to 0. So this also means that if we have a function called fp equals to p squared plus 4p plus 5, uh, minus 5, and what we want to do is to find the p, find the solution, right, right, find the p such that fp equals to 0, f of p equals to 0. So there's another interpretation of this equation, right? So this stuff equals to zero just means that for this function, we need to find the root of this function such that f of p equal to zero, right? And this p is called the root of f of p, right? So this just means how or um, how do we interpret this equation here, right? So if we draw the fp uh, in the graph in the coordinate plane, we can see that this is a quadratic form, right? It's not a linear uh, line, right? Straight line as before, but it's a curve, right? It's actually a curve, right? Um, so how do we draw this curve is um, we can find this find the relation between f of p and p right so for example when p equals to zero and you plug in p equals to zero here and you can find okay f of p equals to minus five right and then you plug in p of every value here and you draw the point here and you um you connect them together, and then you can find um, the f of p here. So, so this is how we draw this quadratic line in a coordinate plane. But after we connect all the points of f of p, we can find that, okay, this is the shape of the curve. It looks like this. Right? <clears throat> so um, to solve this equation is equal to say that we want to find the root of p or sorry we want to find the value of p such that this line this line intersects with the x axis right because to solve this equation means we want to find the root of f of p such that f of p equals to zero and we have already drawn f of p here is a quadratic line like this and uh, when f of p equals to zero that means that 
this line intersects with the x axis x axis here so in this graph we can see that there are two points p1 and p star such that when p equals to p1 or p2 then this line this curve intersects with the uh, x axis right so these two points p1 and p2 are the solution to this equation where we can say that p1 and p2 are two roots of this function f of p and there are two solution values because we see that there are two intersections of the x-axis here right so that's why we need to find the two solutions here right so to summarize uh, so this we want to if we want to solve this equation first we just um, write the left hand side here as a function f of p right and then we draw the f of p on the coordinate plane and looks at this right and then we find the intersections of this curve and the x axis and then we can find okay there are how many points here and here in this example there are two points here so to, from the graph we know that there are two roots or two solutions of uh, this equation right and the next we need to find the two roots right we need to find exactly what is p1 and what is p2 so here we said that the solution p values are referred to as the root of the quadratic equation f of p equals to zero and the p values are the solution are the solutions we need to find to solve this equation right okay so to solve um this equation right or that equation is the same anyway so to solve f of p equals to zero we need this quadratic formula right so this formula is a little bit complicated it says in general given a quadratic equation in a form a times x squared plus bx plus c equal to zero and uh, pay attention that a is not zero right because if a is zero then this just uh, this is just a linear form right this is just a linear equation it's not quadratic one so a should not be zero so if we have a quadratic equation and uh, you look at this form then the two roots are obtained from the quadratic formula this thing right the two roots are called x1 star and x2 star so these are the roots or the solution to this equation so x1 star and x2 star should equal to minus b plus or minus square root of b squared minus 4 times a times c and then divided by 2a right the complicated formula and here the plus and minus means that one root is plus and one root is minus right so for example if we write um, write everything out and uh, the two roots should be one is a plus sign and one is a minus sign as right? the first first thing uh, the first root is minus b plus this stuff divided by 2a and the second root should be minus b minus this stuff and then divided by 2a right so these are the two roots uh, of this equation two roots of this equation Oh, and I forgot to say that um, the p star plus 4p minus 5 equals to 0 um, is just a specific form of this one, right? So this is how we relate these two equations here, right? The p, the x here is just a p in this example, right? So we need to find the general quadratic formula and then we can um, use the formula to solve the our exact problem before okay
And here we have three roots. Uh, uh sorry, sorry, three nodes. First, if b square uh, minus four ac is positive, so what does it mean? It means the minus b plus this thing, right? The square root of this thing is different from minus b minus this thing, right? This thing is b square minus four ac because this thing is strictly positive, so this whole stuff the square root of this stuff is again strictly positive right and so we if we plug uh, if we plus something strictly positive and we minus something strictly positive the solution are not uh, the same right so we have two distinct x1 and x2 so the two roots are distinct and different so if we have this um, case and so we have two roots and they are different from each other. And the second note, if b squared minus 4ac equals to zero, that means that b sorry, that means that b star or b squared equals to 4ac, right? So if this is the case, then the square root of this thing equals to square root of zero. Right? So we can uh, get rid of this term, right? Get rid of this term because this is zero right so we can find that okay um both x1 and x2 are equal to each other right and they are equal to minus b over 2a right because we get rid of the the uh, the other term here so in this case we say that the two roots are identical we still have two roots but the two roots are down uh, downgraded to one root right so in this case we say that okay um, we have one root uh, or we have two roots but they are identical so it's equal to say that we have only one root right so here um, we call this case repeated roots so the third case if b squared minus 4 c is less than zero or is negative and we know that we need to calculate the square root of b squared minus 4ac, right? And if this thing is less than zero, so in the real number, we only talk about real numbers here. In real number, we cannot find a solution of this, right? For example, in the real numbers, we cannot find the square root of minus two, right? We have to use the complex numbers to, to, to represent this, right? So there's no, uh, there's no solution in the real number. So we said that there's no real valued roots exist. So if we draw these three cases here, it looks like this. For the first case, when there are two roots, this curve, the quadratic form, or f of p, is look, look like this, right? So it has two intersections. Uh, in the axis here. So we can find two roots such that f of p equals to zero, right? So this is the first case. And um, for the second case, the two roots are downgraded to one root because these two are equal to each other, right? So this is when this curve is tangent, right? Exactly tangent to the x axis here, right? So these two curves are tangent to each other. So there's only one point here such that f of p equals to zero. Here we said that there's only one root here because this is a tangent point, right? And for the third case, so we have no intersection between this curve and the x-axis here, right? The two are not related to each other. So in this case, we said that there's no real value root exists. We cannot find intersection on the x-axis such that this curve is equal to zero, right? Because uh, even uh, because no matter what p you choose, no matter what p you choose, this curve, the f of p, is strictly positive, right? Strictly above the x-axis here. So there's no intersection between this curve and the x-axis. 
So we can say that there's no real valid root in this. Okay, 